What kinds of sailing craft did people use during their first journeys to the remote distant Pacific Islands around 1500 BC? So far, no actual boats or canoes have been found at the ancient sites of this age in the Pacific Islands, although sailing canoes and traditions are known through historical references, language histories, and living cultural practice. People must have used some kind of sailing craft in order to travel to the islands of remote Oceania. The oldest sites in this region have been found in the Mariana Islands and dated around 1500 BC, involving a sea-crossing voyage beyond 2,000 kilometers and ranking as the world's longest ocean voyage of that time. In historical and modern context in the Marianas, the traditional Chamorro sailing canoe has been a single outrigger canoe with a movable sail, known as the sacman or flying proa. Today, several people sustain the traditions of navigation, canoe building, and practical sailing voyages. In the Mariana Islands, the oldest sites date around 1500 BC, and they have shown that people lived close with the ancient shorelines. Abundant evidence has been preserved in the durable artifacts made of stone, pottery, and shell. The parts of sailing canoes, however, were made of wood and fibers that had decayed long ago, and they had not been found in sites of this age in the Mariana Islands. Elsewhere in the world, canoe parts have been preserved in waterlogged sites of various ages, including some cases much older than 1500 BC, yet nothing of this ancient period has been found in the Mariana Islands. In this case, the records from historical documents and living cultural traditions can depict what the sailing canoes may have looked like and how people could have used them at least as early as Magellan's visit in the year 1521. Some of these traditions probably could be extended much earlier, but an unknown portion of the navigation knowledge and sailing technology probably had changed through time. Whatever had changed from 1500 BC onwards would have involved an expansion of navigational knowledge of the Pacific, as well as perhaps an elaboration of the sailing technology. Accordingly, the sailing canoes and traditions at 1500 BC would not have been any more complicated or more elaborate than what has been known in the later historical records and cultural traditions. The first written accounts and illustrations in the Marianas came from Magellan's crew in the year 1521. In this visit of scarcely a few days, the surviving records were not from Magellan personally, but rather from Antonio Pigafetta and others among the crew. The illustrations from 1521 showed obvious inaccuracies in representing the shapes of the islands, and at least some artistic license was evident in the representation of the sailing canoes. Nonetheless, the sailing canoes can be identified as single outrigger canoes, and the sailors appeared to be using paddles while also manipulating the sails with some kind of rope. The written text from 1521 mentions three important aspects about the sailing canoes. First, they moved quickly, and they seemed to fly across the surface of the water. Second, the sails were made in a triangular shape. Third, the sailors were skilled at reversing the direction of travel as they wished. A somewhat later illustration, dated in the year 1590, depicted the traditional Chamorro canoes probably more accurately. In this illustration, Chamorro people of the Marianos used single outrigger canoes, in some cases with a sail, but in other cases without a sail. The oldest known technical drawing of a traditional Chamorro sailing canoe was in the year 1742, drawn by Piercy Brett during the voyage of the Centurion with George Anselm. This illustration has become a key reference for people making replica models and fully functioning modern sailing canoes. During the 1700s, the Spanish colonial government had prohibited the use of sailing canoes outside the protected reefs and lagoons, but some Chamorro people sustained their sailing traditions and knowledge within those limits. Realistically, though, travel within the lagoons and reef zones could be accomplished with simple paddling of a canoe without a sail, and this option often is easier for many people. By the 1800s, the sailing traditions overall had faded for the population as a whole in the Mariana Islands, yet similar traditions survived in other parts of Micronesia. The historical records and living cultural knowledge have supported a revival of traditional sailing canoes, navigation, and voyaging not only in the Mariana Islands, but also throughout much of the Pacific Oceanic region. 
the central canoe hull, part of a sackman or flying proa of the Marianas, has been understood as made from a dugout tree trunk, traditionally made from a breadfruit tree. Breadfruit trees provide an important food resource, and these trees can grow tall and thereby offer suitable raw material for a canoe hull. Furthermore, the sticky sap of a breadfruit tree potentially could help with sealing any cracks or leaks in the hull. Certain varieties of breadfruit trees grew naturally in island Southeast Asia and in the Mariana Islands even before people ever lived here, and therefore the cultural traditions about breadfruit certainly could extend back into ancient time periods. The sail of a sackman or flying proa traditionally has been understood as made of woven or plaited mats from pandanus trees. Again, these trees existed naturally in the region, and people likely have been creating plated mats and other products for several thousands of years. In the Mariana Islands, the oldest archaeological evidence of plated pandanus mats has come from the impressions of these mats on the bottom sides of earthenware pottery, dated around AD 100 through 200. Nevertheless, the tradition probably could be traced back much older in time. One of the most defining characteristics of the Sackman or flying proa has been the fast speed of movement, described as flying. The high rate of speed probably was crucial in making the unprecedented long-distance voyage beyond 2,000 kilometers in order to reach the Mariana Islands in the first place. Additionally important about the sail, people could move the sail and change the direction of the sailing canoe rapidly during a voyage. This ability certainly could reduce the total length of time at sea, plus it could help in adjusting to whatever new conditions might develop at any given moment. Compared with other sailing canoes, the Sackman or Flying Proa is fast and mobile, but it offers smaller cargo capacity. For a major migration of people across the ocean at 1500 BC, probably several canoes made this voyage. The known results involved at least eight formal residential settlements in three different islands of the Marianas at 1500 BC. The surviving site evidence does not allow for calculating the exact numbers of people at each site, but the numbers of sites would suggest multiple sailing canoes. Aboard each sailing canoe, the crew likely included at least a few people who could attend to the diverse tasks, and the historical and modern traditions indicate crews of seven people. Something like the Sackman or Flying Proa probably was the type of sailing canoe used by the first people to voyage more than 2,000 kilometers out to the Mariana Islands around 1500 BC. The direct evidence from archaeology has been lacking, yet the historical records and modern living traditions have provided considerable information and insights. Currently, many people are engaged in sustaining these traditions. The 500 Sales Project and several other programs have generated knowledge, skills, and experiences far beyond the scope of what archaeology alone has been able to ascertain. What are your thoughts about these ancient sailing craft, and what issues would you like to explore more? Thank you for watching here. I will see you in the next video.